Hi everybody, I'm Marcus Bean and I'm at Ludlow Virtual Food Festival doing a food demonstration. Uh, I've got three dishes I'm going to make today and if you've ever seen me at Ludlow cooking before, I try to do it on spec, I bring some ingredients, I try and get local seasonal ingredients as well from the area and create some incredible dishes. So I'm going to do three dishes today. But remember ladies and gentlemen, this is all about raising funds for Ludlow Food Festival. Head across to their website, the most important, and help us raise 40,000 to keep the festival going. Should we have a look at the ingredients we've got down here? We're going to start with dessert because I know most people when they cook on fire don't always go for dessert so I'm going to do some dark chocolate fondants over here which we're going to cook on the fire I put a little bit of black cardamom in here to give it that smoky texture and we're going to do a salted butter caramel I've also got a bit of cookie dough which I'm going to just to put on there for the sake of eating those and we've got some damsons which of course are great for Shropshire Shropshire are known for their Pacific damsons we've done a puree and we're going to mix that into a cream that's going to be our dessert. Then we're moving over to this section. This is some lovely skirt beefsteak that we've got from the lovely Sarah at Strawberry Fields. And this here is some lemongrass that we grow. I'm going to put on the side. And we actually grow this at the cookery school at Brompton. And we're going to press some of that and make a really simple little marinade. Mix it with some lime juice and a little touch of sugar. And then we're going to serve that with some fresh garden herbs and make sort of a really nice green sauce to go with it. And then further down this way, we have a couple of ingredients and you can see these figs. Now, lots of people buy figs and they think that we can't grow them in this country. We can. We grow them again at Brompton and these are perfectly in season at the moment. You can almost see actually just while we do this, I'm going to give you a little look inside that. And that is one of the figs that we picked yesterday. Super fresh. I'm going to serve these figs cooked over the fire, so warmed and charred with a labna which is a strained yogurt cheese. And we're gonna do a little bit of duca. So we've got some cumin, we've also got some black onion seeds. And then this, which not a lot of people know again, is something called sumac. And sumac is gonna be an ingredient that actually grows in some of our gardens in the UK, uh, but you might sort of see it on a lot of sort of Asian Indian spice dishes. We're gonna be using a sprinkle of that over the top with our labana and our amazing chart grilled figs or maybe a bit of pickled cucumber as well, which is what that massive thing is yeah. there. So we're now gonna go on to the beef skirt. So this, again, is actually a lovely cut of meat, underused really, but it's the part that goes down the rib on the belly. So we need to cook this quite quickly, but what we wanna do is to almost tenderize it a little bit. So you could bash it out with a hammer, a rolling pin, but I'm just gonna do some, just some gentle scores across the top, just to sort of allow the marinade that we're gonna make, just to sort of break into that meat. Just really gentle, not too much of a cut, just a little bit in there. And you can see it's got tender. We've taken any little bits of sinew running through here. Then we're gonna make the marinade, which we'll do into the bowl here. Now, I've got some fresh lemongrass, as I said earlier, which we grow. So with lemongrass, you've got quite a, a firm stick. So you need to be quite firm with this and bat it out. Yeah, to release that incredible flavor inside, which is what we want. And then we just chop it. Nice and fine. And like I say, traditionally most people think of lemongrass, of course, being grown abroad in hotter climates than the UK, but you know, we grow this in our polytunnel in a pot. It works fantastically well. Um, and uh, it's one of those ones that we can use in lots of the fantastic Asian dishes that we do uh, at the cookery school. Again, just release another one. We want all that flavor to come straight out. into our bowl. We're then going to add some lime juice straight in. Just a step. This is going to help break down that acidity from the lime. It's going to break down that edge and just tenderize that meat. And then this is something that's sweet but also slightly savory. This is a ginger rosemary that we grow. So having a little bit of ginger rosemary in with that marinade with all those citrus flavors, lemongrass, and of course that rosemary and the lime juice is just going to help break everything through. The other thing I'm going to add into there as well is a little pinch of salt, which is really important. And another little ingredient, which is not something we grow, but this is a little bit of white miso. The white miso in here will just bring it all together, give it a touch of sort of that salty flavour. And all we're trying to do is just create something that's quite sort of heavy, the protein, the meat. We want to break it down with some really sort of fresh, vibrant, citrusy flavours. And that lime, lemongrass is all going to work really well. So then that just goes into here. I'm just going to rub it all to make sure it mixes in that marinade. Bring it all together. 
And if you wanted, you could leave this for sort of 10 or 15 minutes, but to be honest, once it's marinated straight on, you sort of broke some of that in, it can go straight onto the grill and start cooking to char up. Okay. So that's another couple of minutes now, so we're gonna take a little peek. One of the things you need to do is just have a little look underneath. Check we've got a little bit of color on there, which we have. You can turn that over and just see that on the side. It's a fairly quick cooking process. I'm gonna add a couple of little extras on here. One of those is some lovely red spring onions that are gross. I'm gonna put them straight onto the coals over here. Add those in as well. Get those nice and dirty to break them up. And then lime, just to start a caramelization. When you caramelize that lime, you can squeeze that over as a finisher, which will just give you a little bit of sweetness from the limes as they start to just get a little bit of char. We've let that rest for a good period of time. We've got those charred red onions and we've also got some of that charred lime. We're now gonna do a little simple green sauce with it to go on side. So I'm just gonna get some fresh garden mint with a little bit of lovage. And these are two herbs that work really well together. A little splash of garlic. So I'm just gonna chop the whole thing up. Keep it nice and fine, very fresh. I don't wanna keep over chopping it. I wanna keep it quite sort of rustic in terms of its size. Just want to chop it up, any little stalks we just remove. Just try and keep that. The more you over chop these things, sometimes they just become a little bit too sort of bruised. And you get a little bit of bitterness coming through. So keep that greenery. We've got a bit of garlic. Just going to crush that out. And we're going to chop that through as well. So just a real nice little thin chop. Mix over. Over that. And then I'm going to use a little bit of that blackberry vinegar we had earlier, just for a little element of acidity. I don't want the blackberries in, I just want that, the vinegar to give us the acidity. And we're doing this all on the board to keep it nice and fresh. And then a little drizzle of oil, which we're going to just go straight over the top, straight onto the board, mix that in. And then of course, really important, a little bit of seasoning. A few little black onion seeds for that sort of peppery texture. A couple of little nuts just to give it a bit of extra texture to it as well. And then just chop those together, bringing them in, just almost working them together. So a little bit of vinegar, add a little bit of a garden chili just for an extra kick. That's sort of an interesting surprise. We get the seeds, we get it all in there. We don't take any seeds out. We want all those flavors. And this is one of our little chilies out there. Polytone, so it has got a little bit of kick in it. Like a tiny drop more oil in there. Bring it together, just working it over like that. It's almost that, just incredible mix, yeah. And we're gonna use some of the charred lime as well, just to give that a little bit of caramelization in there. Mix that over the top. Have a little taste of it, just to get those flavors working together. Oh, sweet, savory, incredible flavor. Now we're gonna, oh, woo, with a kick of the chili at the end. Got our nice steak, lovely and cooled down. We're just gonna slice this up into thin little strips, super thin. It's like wafer thin, we want it. And I'm gonna mix it in with that sauce. We've got the lovage, we've got the fresh mint. We've got the lime, we've got the pickled vinegar, we've got all those flavors working together, the chili, the garlic. It's just all coming together now, and you can see, we just mix this in, mix the green sauce over the top. This is all exactly as we want it to be. It's an incredible plate of full flavor. So we've marinated it before with all those citrus flavors, before we even cooked it. Now we've marinated it again. I'm gonna get this straight onto the plate. Salad with that green sauce over the top. Now we're just going to bring that up to the front of the board and we're going to add a little garnish, but you can see all that colour and that's marinating that meat with the extra flavours we've done with that green sauce. The onions, I'm just going to take the outer edges off where they've been set on the fire and I'm going to leave some of that char in there because we want that smoky flavour. I'm just going to literally just really roughly chop it up so you've got this sweet cooked onion over the top. Yeah. Same with the other one, to create another little top to that. But and you can see how soft that onion goes by cooking it on the fire. It just gives you this incredible flavor. That is exactly what we want over the top. And then again, 
you those little fennel pods sprinkled over. And the last little thing, which we haven't forgotten about, is our cucumber. Now, this is a cucumber we have at the cookery school, and we're going to do some little thin slices. Really, like, wafer thin, as thin as we can possibly get them. Yeah, you could use a mandolin if you wanted. Just really quick thin. And this is actually a, like a pickling cucumber with a slightly harder skin. We want that for the texture element. But they're super thin. I'm going to throw that straight into our vinegar, which I'm going to bring over here so you can see them both together. And this is our, our literally an apple cider vinegar, which we've then just added a little touch of sugar into. So then we're just going to get that soft, quickly marinade. And you remember you got the skin on, so just to sit out almost like a fresh salad in here. And then again, just a few little sprinkles of the fresh mint over the top, just to break it up. Give us that fresh flavour. And that is our skirt steak marinated, cooked on the fire, let rest, made with a green sauce with lovage, and also with a little bit of fresh mint, a touch of pickled cucumber, and some char onions. Lavender dish. So this is the char grilled figs that we've had on the fire and these again the figs that we grow at home at the cookery school and we've just basically put them on the fire and because they're so sweet and they've got all this lovely juice inside by putting them on the fire it's just going to blister them up and almost make them slightly caramelized in terms of flavor so i'm going to show you inside there before we get the other little bits ready we can just literally just open these up and you can see that a little bit of char around the outside different colors of the figs we've got here and you can open those right up but that little bit of char on the outside is going to give us that sweetness and that caramelization so it's almost like a smoky sweet fig which is what we're trying to achieve and then we have got over this side as well we've got a little bit of the lavender now the lavender was what i was talking about earlier and this is literally just a strange yogurt super easy to do uh, full fat natural yogurt a teaspoon of salt goes into about 500 grams you mix it around and then you strain it strain it overnight if you can you can set it until it goes almost like mozzarella if you want to but this you can see is set it's almost like a cream cheese texture so we're just going to grab some of this and put this onto the plate literally just a good dollop of that and we're just going to sort of spread that around that bottom of the plate to create a nice base for our figs then we're going to add onto here of course our figs we're just going to sit in there, we're going to pick those nice, really caramelised, sweet charred figs. And then we've got a couple of little spices we're going to add on. So one of the things we want to do is make a really quick sort of little duka. So some cumin, a little bit of some already roasted cashew nuts, yeah, and a little pinch of salt, okay. And that little bit of spice is just going to work really well with the others. So just break it up, mix it in. Always have a little taste. Yeah. Beautiful, salty. It's going to balance really well with the sweetness of the figs. The other thing I'm going to add in there is a little bit of black onion seeds. We'll pop those in. Give those a little shake around. And then we're going to just literally sprinkle that over the top. And then I've got a few little wild fennel seeds that I was picking from around the grounds here at Redford Farm Barns. And these are just fresh fennel, the little tops that grow, not a lot of people know about them, they're absolutely delicious in terms of their flavour and they work really well. And the other thing is the last couple of bits is this, which is our sumac. Now, sumac we'd normally blitz up, so what I'm going to do is just chop it a little finely just to get a nice sort of slight bit of powder and this has a citrusy flavor so sumac traditionally almost tastes a little bit sort of lemony in flavor absolutely delicious but remember this is this fresh one so it has got this sort of different texture yeah over the top and then the last little garnish is this now these i didn't quite let i told you about these earlier but these I can get the top open there we go are underripe pickled blackberries so we've made 
the little underripe blackberries. So when they're slightly red or they haven't quite ripened up, you pick them and then you can pickle them. So we've done a sweet pickle and I've warmed that pickle up, added them in. I'm just going to dot a couple of these around the plate and then some of this juice as well is going to go on to give us this incredible flavour. So you've almost got this sort of sweet acidic vinegar, those underripe little blackberries which have gone soft but they've also got a little bit of crunch to them as well. And that is our Labna char grilled figs from Brompton Cookery School English figs, underripe pickled blackberries, duca, sumac and wild fennel.